African photography is diverse yet beautiful, ranging from photographs of nature and landscapes to people and animals. It gives viewers a sense of beauty and past, and its movement can give people a new sense of Africa. It can break barriers and molds of the ideals constructed in our society of life in Africa. While showing the beauty of the continent, photos of Africa can tell us stories of the past, the realities of ancestors, and the diverse range of people through the photographer's eyes. Photography has been a vital part of cultural history all over Africa, with studios established as early as the 1850s. This practice is one that is steeped in colonial tradition. These first studios were primarily used by white settlements to document their explorations. It was a companion to colonial military rule, although even in the 1880s, they were studios operated by black Africans. However, it is only in the past several decades that we have truly began to recognize and appreciate the contributions of indigenous black photographers. Saidu Kita was a Malian portrait photographer. He was born in 1921 in Bamako, Mali to a family of furniture makers. His interest in photography started when he was 14 and received a Kodak Brownie as a gift. He opened his own studio in 1948 and became the official photographer for the socialist government in 1962. He would use props and backdrops. The people he photographed would bring an object of personal significance and he would use those freely as his props. He also had an assortment of European style accessories and clothing that many of his clients would choose to wear. He worked economically and would only take a single shot of every photo. He said, it's easy to take a photo, but what really made a difference was that I always knew how to find the right position, and I was never wrong. Their head slightly turned, a serious face, the position of the hands. I was capable of making someone look really good. He was not recognized in the West until the 1990s after his retirement. His first solo show took place in Paris in 1944, and today he was widely recognized as one of the fathers of African photography. Malik Sidibe was a Malian photographer that was known for his black and white studies of popular culture. He was a peasant child who raised animals. He became the first member of his family to attend school after he was chosen by the village chief to be sent to the white school. His skill in charcoal drawings drew attention to his talent and got him selected into the School of Sudanese Craftsmen. Sidibe started out taking pictures at weddings and christenings in the 1950s using a Kodak Brownie camera. After opening his own studio, he branched out to a more social reporting. He attended Saturday night parties at which young Malians dressed to the nines danced the twist, the rumba, and the merengue to Beatles, James Brown, and Afro-Caribbean music. Sidibe's black and white photos of young people partying captured the liveliness of the newly independent Mali in the 1960s and 70s. This made him one of the most celebrated artists from Africa. His capturing of happiness and youth gave Westerners a new view of Africa. Joanna Shumali was born in the Ivory Coast in 1974 and spent her entire childhood there. She lives and works in a city in the Ivory Coast. She studied graphic arts in Morocco and worked as an art director at an advertising agency before she started her photography career. Growing up in the Ivory Coast gave her an understanding of the unexpected nuances in African culture. Her modern approach to photography along with her photos of beauty, truths, and stories is what has made her a standout and an important figure in African photography today. Humaniste. Mm -hmm. Donc, uh, Robert Douano, uh, Sébastien Ocelgado, j'aime beaucoup le travail aussi de... Beaucoup de gens, hein? je sais pas. <laughs> Mais donc, tu <laughs> penses... Tu, tu, tu dirais que tes influences étaient okay. plutôt... Africaine ou plutôt euh, occidentale Non, non, j'en viens beaucoup plus aux Indiens que j'allais. Ah, d'accord. J'aime <rire> euh, beaucoup aussi Steve McCurry. Mm -hmm. euh, 
avec sa, son, son iconique photo euh, des Afghan Girl qui m'a beaucoup beaucoup marqué. Et puis j'aime euh, en photographie africaine, j'ai été pas mal inspirée et d'ailleurs je, je pense que je le suis toujours. Et nous le sommes toutes, tous euh, par euh, Malik Sidibé qui vient de mourir, mm -hmm. Seydou Keita, Jean Depara. Et euh, j'aime beaucoup beaucoup aussi. Non, d'abord même je n'aime pas le terme une identité parce que déjà l'Afrique il y a des milliers de, 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 de il y a des milliers de cultures, mm -hmm. des milliers d'Afrique mm -hmm. avec un S dans l'Afrique. Mm -hmm. Donc déjà on ne peut pas définir la photo africaine mm -hmm. par un seul style, ça ce serait complètement utopique. C'est comme si on disait la photo européenne ou la photo mm -hmm. sud-américaine. Mm -hmm. Ça ne rien dire. Mais euh, disons que euh, pour le peu que je sais, en tout cas, de la, de, de, des photographes et des, de ce qui a déjà été fait en photographie africaine, euh, le, 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 le portrait est vraiment au cœur euh, de, 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 de la photographie, aussi bien euh, euh, dans les années 50-60 qu'aujourd'hui, parce que je crois que les sociétés africaines sont des sociétés qui sont encore euh, sans cible à l'image mm -hmm. et euh, pendant longtemps il y avait vraiment cette culture d'aller faire un portrait euh, dans un studio bien précis, de saper tout le monde avec le même pas, il y a mm -hmm. arrivé comme ça et faire vraiment il y a ce... depuis que tu as commencé voilà c'est là que j'allais en venir mm -hmm. euh, peut-être pas depuis que j'ai commencé mais il y a quelques... depuis les cinq dernières années je, je sens un un regain d'intérêt pour, euh, pour la photographie comme, euh, comme, euh, comme discipline artistique. Et puis, euh, moi j'ai commencé en 97, comme ça, à l'époque de l'argentique. Donc c'était un peu plus difficile, de, de, il fallait vraiment le vouloir euh, pour aller acheter une pellicule, avoir la possibilité de rater, faire des tirages, etc. Mais depuis l'ouverture de, de, de certaines marques d'appareils photo et numériques, euh, on, on constate qu'il y a beaucoup plus de personnes qui mm -hmm. pensent que c'est moins opaque, c'est un milieu moins fermé, et il y a plus de possibilités effectivement de s'exprimer à travers ce, à travers ce médium-là. Mm -hmm. Et je constate effectivement qu'il y, euh, y a un engouement et surtout la, la pose, enfin, beaucoup de jeunes artistes se rendent compte de la possibilité de, 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 de montrer l'Afrique sous un autre regard, sous un regard plus juste, plus, plus correct, et euh, de, oui, de pouvoir justement montrer l'Afrique de l'intérieur. Etc. Je fais partie effectivement de ce mouvement de jeunes artistes qui... qui qui ne, se, qui ne se voient pas limités par les règles académiques de la photographie et qui se permettent d'être de, de, à cheval entre deux disciplines euh, et justement montrer l'aide de l'Afrique à travers euh, le travail photographique. Mmh. Donc oui, effectivement, je crois que ça a changé et que c'est en train de changer et que ça va encore plus changer. Mmh. Inch'Allah. Inch'Allah. <rire> Her works focus on Africa and the many cultures that surround her, and her projects bring to light harsh topics such as facial scarification, young men and women seeking independence, shanty towns, slums, and more. Being a woman trying to make a name for yourself in the Ivory Coast is not a simple task, and she has explained that it is especially hard to start out in the photography business as a woman. Women are not taken seriously as photographers in her homeland, and she has been overlooked countless times at shoots and meetings.